if you're talking about the uh, sex chat rooms and all of that, that is something that is actually huge in the country, but nobody uh, actually, it's, it's a thing where you do it probably personally. Hi everyone, this is Silesh from AsianCultureVulture.com. It's Cannes Film Festival 2023, and I'm with the talent, and it is talent from the team Agra. And if they they're going to introduce themselves. Hi, so I'm Kanu Behel. I'm the writer director. And I'm Mohit Agarwal. I'm the lead of the film. Okay. Yes. So where did the inspiration, well, what was the trigger idea for Agra? Uh, so uh, after Titli, which was my first film, I, I, was, I was thinking what is it that I want to talk about next and, uh, and around that time, you know, I started thinking about my, my uh, 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 early adulthood and some of the years that I'd spent in Delhi and then in Kolkata at film school. And I realized that, you know, in, in those years, I, I had felt some sort of a sexual repression, which which I had not been able to really speak about, really express. And, and it was something that was still sort of, you know, roiling inside me. And I felt like it was something that I needed to talk about. And that's where the initial idea for the film really germinated. And then I started, you know, trying to find some sort of broader context for it. And I realized that culturally what's very interesting about India is that we are one of the most populous countries on the planet, but we have such little space. I mean, China is as much as many people as us, but there's such a such a big landmass and we are just packed in like a can of sardines. And I felt that, you know, the moment you contextualize sexuality and sexual repression with the idea of physical space and how how your physical spaces affect your sexuality and how your sexuality in turn starts modifying the spaces that you live in the moment you start looking at at this through this lens things sort of made took a very interesting shift for me and i think that really ended up becoming the core of the film and how did the lead character what, what was the kind of the central what did you latch on to to get a way into the, the main character it wasn't like very sudden it was a slow process of getting into that uh, character and i think it is actually coming from firstly understanding what it is uh, feeling uh, he, the g character guru is is doing things which the society probably won't accept and and but and rebelling towards something that exists so starkly in the country but nobody talks about it uh, so I guess just to um, firstly understand it and then kind of empathize with it and uh, yeah then taking it from there I guess I mean uh, I had to firstly really accept the truth that uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for and and then understand it and, and go from there yeah it's a very raw film I mean you really show some things which I haven't seen very much in Indian cinema and was it difficult to write? Did you find yourself self censoring and, and Yeah, yeah, it was a very interesting journey actually because you know there were there were two two sort of uh, truths that uh, that 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 I knew were very difficult truths that I'd have to deal with one of them I was aware of the other one I wasn't and obviously the one that I was aware of was when I started thinking about the film the first thought obviously you knowing that you function within the Indian context, I knew it's going to be a really difficult film to find finance for. So that obviously I knew right from the start. But the other thing which was the more interesting thing which which I didn't know was that I was, as, I, as you said, to a certain extent uh, self-censoring and not really writing what what I probably was truly feeling like. And uh, around that time, I ended up being at a residency in Italy. Uh, it's called the Three Rivers Residency, uh, which is run by uh, Olivia Stewart. And my mentor there was uh, uh, Molly Stenskard, who edits for Lars von Trier. And I ended up working with her for a month, month and a half. And I remember that, you know, by the fourth or fifth day of the workshop, she'd read the script, we discussed and we were talking about it. And we, you know, after our session for the day was over, we sat down for a cup of tea and she looked at me really curiously and she said uh, why are you doing this film and and I and I was a little taken aback and I said uh, because I want to do a piece about sexuality and sexual repression and then she paused and she looked at me even more curiously and then she said but why are you not doing it and and so you know that changed a lot of things for me because I realized that I was not probably finding enough courage to be able to put on paper 
uh, as honestly as possible what it was that I had gone through and what I was feeling and uh, that was a crucial sort of turning point with the film. From there on, I, it was pens down and I, and I took a month, month and a half to really think about whether I, I'm ready to make this film or not. And when I did make that decision, then I think that's when the film truly sort of started shaping up. And is that where the character of Guru came from out of that? You know, for me, he's a very sexually frustrated young man and he's not able to navigate the kind of the, um, the dating space very well. I don't know. How, how do you read that? What, what was your first impression uh, of Guru as a character? Yeah, I think uh, everyone has a bit of Guru in them but they don't, yeah. they don't talk about it or they do it very, very privately. Uh, so, uh, I think where the, if you're talking about the uh, sex chat rooms and all of that, uh, that is something that is actually huge in the country, but nobody uh, actually, it's, it's a thing where you do it probably personally. And uh, yeah, f for me personally, I think uh, uh, for me, uh, if, I, if I'd gone to, play the madness it wouldn't have worked rather than understanding the madness feeling for it and then making it my truth yeah. of some sense right. uh, and then going from there uh, rather than trying to play the madness because that I don't think would work I would just look like another guy of the society who's trying to be fake about what he's actually feeling uh, so yeah, it was it was more of uh, yeah, because also in that sense, he's the only guy who's fighting for the who's truth. Fighting in that for the area. truth, yeah. and to fight for the truth, I have to believe in the truth, and and, and that truth could be uh, very disturbing for a lot of people, very uh, yeah. secret for a lot of people, and very personal. But it does exist. I mean, you know. No, I think for a lot of people, he's going to be a slightly dislikable character because he's doing things that nobody can really. Uh, approval uh, yeah but also then you know I would say it's easy to like people who yeah. are likable it's yeah. those that are at the margins that are, are the people that we have to fight for and I, I I don't think I think it's something that's really important that we've forgotten as as a film community now that our job is not to a filmmaker's jo job or any artist's job I mean as, as an actor or, or any artist our job is not to deliver characters that are likable our job is to deliver characters or make you experience characters that are at the margins that are that are not being fully understood however difficult they might be and to make you see them in another light whether that like light is likable or not you yeah. decide yeah. and hopefully be able to start a conversation around that yeah. and and that's really the larger goal you know we need to talk about the margins and then the the, the larger conversation is for the society to have as a whole yeah. you know so Absolutely. so so why the title agro why is it everybody associates agro with the taj and you know especially outside india uh, they may, I don't know whether they could associate our, the Taj and Agra together, but what, why Why did you choose a title and it's set in Agra? So there were two reasons, you know, for that. One is anyway that this idea of Agra and the Taj Mahal, I really wanted to subvert. So there's no Taj Mahal in the film in because, the film. because you know, this, this modern idea of love, which is really driven from this cell of advertising, I don't personally buy myself into at all. For me, love is not about this, uh, especially the, the, the love that's sold in Bollywood films, this this eternal love and this one uh, spiritual partner that you have, I I don't I don't agree with it at yeah. all. Uh, I think it's a complete sell, and and you know, for me, really, love is about witnessing your uh, your life with another partner, with another human being. You are two human beings who choose to be together and you're witnessing each other's lives. So, yeah, I, A, I didn't want to go down the Taj Mahal route at all. Mm. And B, also what was really interesting for me was uh, that, you know, uh, there's also the mental asylum in, in Agra, which is, uh, which at some point was the largest mental asylum. And for me, the house within the film and the family that you see in the film uh, uh, is almost that microcosm is a representation for a much larger microcosm. Mm -hmm. And that's really, for an Indian audience, it's almost immediate that connection. I wanted them to make that connection and I wanted, it to, wanted them to see it from that lens. Absolutely. And playing the character of Guru, you're doing a lot of things which are mostly down behind closed doors. I mean, right. and this is your first feature role. How, how, right. how 
how did you um, get over that challenge or how did you what I guess you... I guess if you're getting to spend about three to four months with the director in a very personal space and and I had to speak all my truth as Mohit to him for for us to be transparent with each other and his vision of the film and, and my portraying of the character and uh, once you reach that kind of truth and and uh, nakedness in both internal and external way then then I guess uh, then it becomes slightly easier to uh, be fine with uh, your own body the the sexuality the repression you understand it and then then it's just about executing what we did in the workshop pretty much you know what I mean so what does it mean to bring it to can to have that uh, I mean that it's it's, uh, it's a beautiful experience you're you're bringing it to a space that is known as the harbinger of the some of the best cinema across the world so it's it's obviously an honor and 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 and, and we feel really good to be amongst uh, some of the luminaries of world cinema and to be able to share the same space is always really encouraging it at some point it also tells you uh, hopefully that you're on the right path and and yeah so for me it's uh, it's, it's 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 a beautiful experience that way and how about for you Rob? because oh, it's, it's such huge. an amazing journey to go this is your first feature film and it's landed it up here i know i know sometimes i i feel up, up, i get a bit overwhelmed with everything but uh, I also believe in uh, just being involved in different processes and then not thinking of the aftermath and this happened to be one of that. Uh, for me, in my head, it's the next journey that I want to probably live. I mean, as, as beautiful as it is, I mean, I've seen uh, Cannes Festival photos and videos as a child and to be here, it feels really special. Uh, but for me, it's it's still, still the process that I enjoyed so much and I'm still trying to live it like that and probably going forward from here, I guess. And, and so what's the life of Agra now? What's the uh, you're going to be doing more festivals when an Indian audience is going to be able to uh, engage with this film uh, and yeah hopefully soon I mean the 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 plan right now is to let the film have some sort of uh, uh, life uh, uh, at the festival so we're going to go on that journey hopefully for the next six eight months gather more equity for the film have more people across the world see it and hopefully be able to make the film slightly bigger than the way it is conventionally looked at in, in India and, yeah. and then hopefully be able to come out with it uh, sometime really soon, maybe later this year or early next year. And can I just ask you about the, the mental health side of it is also very interesting I think and, and maybe you've talked a lot about sexuality but actually for me the root of it is that he has a lot of mental health issues and that it, the sexuality is slightly a byproduct of that. Yeah. How would you respond to that? So I actually completely disagree with it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think it's the first reaction, and it's really easy to call him a mentally ill uh, uh, boy because he's a difficult character, and you you want you feel as an audience the immediate need to other him and say no 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 no, but he is mentally disturbed. But my question to any audience that that watches the film is if he's mentally disturbed then how mentally disturbed are all the other characters living in this house who just are more adept at keeping their public personas, uh, 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 you know, yeah. their masks put on well, but they are really the ones who are with who are living with far more, uh, far more uh, uh, many layers of repression, they are just hiding it better. This central character is the only guy who's fighting for Actually the truth and, do and doesn't have the, the, the vocabulary or he's not yeah. equipped to be able to yeah. deal with it. So yeah. he is actually the most honest guy. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, so so I I I I I feel I am I'm, I'm a little at 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 variance with the looking at the film from the mental mental health no, uh, uh, camp. Me there, and it's a very powerful argument. And I think that's one. In some ways, India needs to have this kind of conversation. Yeah. Absolutely, where these subjects are talked about because coming from the West, it's a different situation. You see these guys. We're all exposed to the same things, and yet the culture is so different in India than it is in the West. And yeah. Dealing Absolutely. with that, yeah. thank you so much for spending time thank with Asian Culture Vulture, and I wish you Pleasure. all the best with the movie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.